broadcast television in the mid-1980s and early 1990s was dominated by domestic sitcoms, family-friendly shows about the trials and triumphs of parents raising kids and those kids pushing back against their parents' authority. This video is about one of the longest-running ones that stood out from the bunch, Growing Pains. The show, created by Neil Marlins, centered on the Seaver family of Huntington, Long Island, New York. Dr. Jason Roland Seaver, played by Alan Thicke, a psychiatrist, works from home since his wife, Margaret Catherine, better known as Maggie, played by Joanna Kearns, has gone back to work as a reporter after being home with their kids for an extended period of time. Their eldest, 15-year-old Michael Aaron, aka Mike, played by Kirk Cameron, is a troublemaker, poor student, and girl magnet. Middle child, 14-year-old Caroline Ann, aka Carol, played by Tracy Gold, is a neurotic overachiever. And youngest, for a time, 8-year-old Benjamin Hubert Horatio Humphrey, aka Ben, played by Jeremy Miller, is quite a rascal and follows his older brother as his role model. ABC was willing to take a chance on Growing Pains as a response to NBC's success with The Cosby Show, which had premiered the year before and instantly became a massive hit. The theme song, written by John Bettis and Steve Dorff, called As Long As We Got Each Other, was originally performed by 60s and 70s country pop hit maker B.J. Thomas. As long as we got each other, we got the world's Alan was an unlikely and risky choice to play the head of the Seaver family. He'd only acted on screen a few times, but in his native Canada, the Alan Thick show was so popular that he was recruited to reformat it as Thick of the Night, a late night program to face off against NBC's The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Sadly, it was a major flop and quickly canceled, but Growing Pains producers thought he might thrive in a family sitcom format. Soon after the cancellation of another series she starred in called The Four Seasons, Joanna went out for Growing Pains in 1984. She really needed to land the gig since she was going through a messy divorce and was short of cash. She actually auditioned with Alan and the rest, as they say, is history. Jeremy had started acting when he was about five and did a few guest spots on a bunch of TV shows, including Charles in Charge and Different Strokes. He landed the role of Ben by telling jokes and just being himself, beating out hundreds of other kids. Tracy, a seasoned child star with more than 20 credits to her name at the time, auditioned for the role of Carol, but wasn't initially cast. Elizabeth Ward was chosen for the pilot instead. Tess audiences didn't favor her though, so they asked Tracy to come back and audition again, this time with Kirk, and she got the job. Kirk almost didn't get the part of Mike either. Being a typical teenager, he wanted to hang out with his friends and play basketball, not go to the audition. When he did show up, he was late. They let him in anyway, and Kirk won them over. A fourth child, Christine Ellen, aka Chrissy, is born at the beginning of season four. She was played in her newborn slash infant stage by two uncredited sets of twin sisters, who remained in the role until that season ended. By season five, she was played in her toddler stage by alternating twins, Kirsten and Kelsey Doring. In season six and seven, Chrissy's age was advanced to five years old and then played by Ashley Johnson. By 1991, Growing Pains was entering its seventh season and running on fumes. Viewers were abandoning the series too, so producers attempted to save the show by bringing in some new blood. At the start of that season, the Seavers unofficially adopted a wayward and abandoned teenager named Luke Brewer, portrayed by an up-and-coming young actor named Leonardo DiCaprio. Unfortunately, the show didn't bounce back and ratings continued to plummet, causing Leo to hightail it out of there before the end of the season, which would turn out to be the series' last. Although quite corny at times, Growing Pains did offer some very realistic elements of family life, like how Mike teased Carol about her weight. According to E! True Hollywood Story, those jabs were possibly a little too realistic because Tracy couldn't help but internalize some of those cruel jokes. During her time on the series, she secretly suffered from anorexia. Her weight dropped from 133 pounds to around a dangerous low of 80. She did eventually seek treatment, which caused her to miss filming several of the last season's episodes. When she did return to shoot the series finale, she knew she still had a way to go on her journey to recovery. In the final scene, the Seavers eat pizza together, and Tracy said that she just couldn't do it, instead faking like she did. Kirk Cameron, without a doubt, became the unofficial star of the show and one of the most popular teen idols of the 80s. So since he was the reason many of Growing Pain's younger viewers watched, that influence gave him plenty of pull with both producers and the network. According to E! True Hollywood Story, he was left feeling empty by sitcom fame and fortune, 
and he found purpose when he fully committed to his Christian faith. While this may have been a great thing for him, it wasn't for his castmates. Kirk distanced himself from everyone, which led to a lot of hurt feelings. He didn't even invite them to his wedding with his Growing Pains co-star, Chelsea Noble, who played Mike's girlfriend, Kate McDonald. Then he took things a step further when he tried to alter the course of the show. He began to insist that plot lines be edited to remove anything he thought was too adult or inappropriate. Due to his complaints to the brass at ABC about several of the executive producers being porn they got fed up and quit. Rumor has it that he even put his two cents into casting decisions. Growing Pains featured many recurring characters, one of which was nanny Julie Costello, played by Julie McCullough. She came on board in 1989 and appeared in several episodes until she was fired the following year. According to Us Weekly, Kurt grew incensed when he discovered that the actress, whose character would go on to date and become engaged to Mike, had once appeared nude in Playboy. Julie believes it was Kirk's attitude that got her fired, and the fictional wedding called off. Kirk denies this and insists her role was always meant to be a short-term thing. Now, I don't know who the source was that Us Weekly used, but I found a very interesting interview with Julie about how she first came to know Kirk, and, well, I'll let her tell it. I knew Kirk before I even did the show, and so they wound up casting me, and then that's how I became the nanny and his girlfriend on the show. And I met him because a couple years earlier, I had been a Playboy Playmate, and we used to sign autographs at the car show circuit. And I was in, I think it was, I think it was Philadelphia, I can't remember now, it's been so long, but it was at a car show, and Chubby Checker was playing. I just remember that because he was there. And I was there signing autographs as a Playboy bunny. And Kirk and Alan were there signing autographs at that same car show. And they kept coming over because the other bunnies that were there, they were all older. I was... I, I was like the teenage looking bunny. I was so young. And so Kirk and his little friend kept coming over wanting autographs for me. And then, then they asked me, you know, hey, you're gonna come see Chubby Checker later? And, um, and Alan looks at her and goes, you know, Kirk really wants you to come watch the show <laughs> with him. We please just come to the Chubby Checker yeah, Alan show. Alan was his wingman. Yes. And so I go later to listen to Chubby Checker sing, and then Chubby Checker got me and Kirk up to do the twist. And there's oh, I've so got funny. snapshots of Kirk and I doing the twist with Chubby Checker singing at that car show. So that's how I actually that's met great. him. Great story. And then he kept inviting me. He, would, he got my phone number, and he kept inviting me to come down to watch episodes when y'all were filming. And I, don't know, I was like, oh, that's really sweet. No, I can't. You know, it's like I was always gone on the weekends doing car shows. Well, did you so, ever come? Uh, no. No, you didn't. I okay. never did because I was like, I knew he liked me, and I was oh, like, no. you know, he was like, you know, I was barely older than him, but still, he was younger than me. And I was like, I'm not gonna date him. He's he's I'm I'm he's a little bit he's just a few years younger yeah. than me, but still. And um, so that was that. And then flash forward, next thing you know, when I walked in the room and he saw me at that audition, he, he lit up like a freaking Christmas tree. Yeah. He was like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, I know. <laughs> and that's how that happened. So some questions still need to be answered. Did Kirk really have a hand in Julie getting kicked off the show? Or is he right and she was always going to get the axe since her character was never meant to be permanent? Probably the most well-known and loved recurring character was Richard Milhouse de Bone, better known as Boner, played by Andrew Koenig. Boner, who was Mike's best friend, was featured in seasons one through four and exited the show when he left to join the United States Marine Corps. On February 14th, 2010, Andrew was last seen leaving the apartment of a friend he'd been visiting in Vancouver, British Columbia. He was reported missing four days later after his father in Los Angeles received a despondent letter from him. One week after that, Andrew's body was found in a park in Vancouver. At a news conference, his father confirmed that his son had taken his own life. He was 41 years old. In the end, Growing Pains didn't enjoy a high-profile, much-discussed big finale episode like other series did. Instead, it finished as the 75th most-watched show on broadcast TV, 
a far cry from its time as a top five show. Switching gears from that unfortunate detail, here are 10 fun facts about Growing Pains. A future major TV and movie star was another finalist for the role of Jason Seaver. His name is Bruce Willis. The main reason the chemistry between Alan and Joanna was so palpable was because they were actually feeling each other for real behind the scenes. They liked each other so much that they even considered dating. Ultimately, they decided not to mix business with pleasure for the sake of the show. Jeremy hated leaving his TV family when the first few seasons wrapped. Joanna told People Magazine that when the season was over, he'd cry. Jeremy also wasn't too happy about Leonardo DiCaprio coming on board. It bothered him that the network felt it was necessary to add a new character, rather than focus on his long-term character, who had grown up and was now the same age. When Leo joined the show, his pal, Tobey Maguire, ended up spending a lot of time on set hanging out with him. The first time Kirk met his future wife wasn't when she got the role on the show. It was actually on the set of Full House. He was there to visit his sister, Candace Cameron, who played DJ Tanner, while she was there visiting a friend. Kirk and Tracy played brother and sister in a McDonald's commercial three years before they played brother and sister on Growing Pains. Maura Tierney lost out on her opportunity to be a part of the cast after producers unceremoniously dismissed her. In the late 80s, she did secure a role, which would have been one of her first acting jobs, but she was fired after only two days of rehearsals. She thinks the reason was either a bad attitude or an inability to follow scene partner Kirk Cameron's cues. The series was huge in China. In the 80s, it was only one of two American shows allowed to air there. Growing Pain spawned the spin-off series, Just the Ten of Us, starring stand-up comedian Bill Kirkenbauer as coach Graham Lubbock, the same character he played on Growing Pains. Now this next fact is absolutely not fun. In fact, it's horrific making it inappropriate to include in the list, but it is worth mentioning. Executive producer Stephen Marshall was arrested in 2009 on charges of distribution and possession of child pornography. He ultimately pled guilty to distribution and the possession charge was dropped. Authorities said he engaged in sending and receiving child pornography and participated in online chats detailing child abduction, bondage, rapes, and murder. The following year, he was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. As time went by, ABC figured that all those viewers who tuned out before the end of Growing Pains wanted to know how the Seaver family story ended, and the network commissioned two made-for-television reunion movies. Airing in 2000, the Growing Pains movie showed Mike growing up to be an advertising executive with four children, Carol becoming a corporate attorney, Ben cleaning pools, and Maggie running for elected office. In 2004's Growing Pains, Return of the Seavers, Jason and Maggie consider selling the family home, but decide not to on account of all the great memories. In the fall of 1989, the show was sold to local syndication, which continued until 1997. In 2006, Warner Home Video released the first season on DVD in the US and Canada. The following year, it was released across Latin America. The rest of the seasons were released via the Warner Archive collection over the next 10 years, in North America only as manufactured on-demand titles available exclusively through Warner's online store and Amazon.com. The complete series on DVD was released just this last winter in February, 2023. Growing Pains is currently available on a variety of streaming services, including iTunes and Amazon.